how's it going? So judging by how well that Rickenbacker video did there a couple days ago, I got to say, I really didn't know what to expect with that one. I was very, very happy with, with the response we got. Seems like a lot of you guys liked that video. A lot of you guys commented that, oh, well, that's an original piece of artwork. You should have kept it. Yeah, an original piece of artwork that somebody drew in fucking math class. Anyway, uh, Steve's back again. Steve's uh, sitting over in the corner, masked, socially distanced, and whatnot. One of these days, we're going to get him on the show if he hasn't been already. I think he's been on once or twice or whatever, but he's uh, he is officially uh, this show's Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> so what am, what am I, Tim the Tool Man? Oh, fuck. Now we're, we're in trouble now. Anyway. So, Steve brought us a real treat today. He, I think he might have found the ugliest guitar in the entire fucking world. <laughs> well, I, I don't know, man. There's been some pretty fucking ugly guitars. Uh, some I'm going to show you guys right here. And, of course, some that I can't even show you that look like sexual organs. I mean, I definitely uh, fall into the what in the fuck were they thinking category. But we do have a real doozy. Uh, in terms of ugly guitars, this one's pretty hideous. Um, I gotta say, I, th I think the best thing I like about this guitar so far is the case that's coming in. We've got, uh, what is this? Pro Rock Gear Case. Where'd you get this case, Steve? Because uh, I really like this case. I'm not sure. Okay. It just fit the damn thing. It smells nice, too. You know you're in for a real treat when the case looks nicer than the guitar. So we've got ourselves an old silver tone from the 50s. You guys ready for this? And uh, here it is. Oh. Thank you. Ooh, look at it glint like that. I kind of feel a bit like Marty McFly in the first Back to the Future movie. So here it is. This is a silver tone that Steve has dated back to 58, 1958, is 57, that? 57, 58, yeah. 57, 58. Um, he's got, came up with that date from what he's been able to determine uh, by researching catalogs, actually. And I gotta say, this is in really good shape. Uh, for being so old, but I think I can kind of understand why it's in such good shape. This thing is so fucking disgustingly ugly. Um, nobody would, in their right mind, would want to play this. You know, unless they want to stay a virgin for the rest of it's their life. It's got that pea soup green color to it. Uh, well, no, it's not pea soup. You were calling it baby shit green earlier. Okay. Yes. <laughs> like, this looks like, this is the color you pull out of a of an infant's diaper. I mean, like, this is just <laughs> gross. Ugh. And, and what, what's even worse, check out the back. Look at this. Gold flake heaven, eh? Oh, wow. Must have, well, wow. This, well, this is the thing, okay? They weren't trying to sell to hip teenagers back then. They were trying to sell to parents who didn't know what the hell to get their kids for Christmas at Sears. Because this is exactly where you'd get, you'd get this guitar at Sears, wouldn't you? Yeah, department stores. Yeah, well, so your Sears or for uh, our American friends, the JC Pennies and a yep. whole bunch of other stores that went out of business in the last couple of years because uh, they can't compete with Amazon. I'm, I'm just kind of stunned by how good of shape this guitar is in. There's like one minor flaw I can see in the neck here. I don't know if I can get a fucking shot of this or not, if I can get in close. But it just seems like there's a bit of indentation in the fretboard here. The old finger wear. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, a lot of cowboy chords uh, went through this thing. <laughs> Because uh, I don't think I don't think we were, I don't think very many eruption type solos were done with this guitar, but uh, wow, it's uh, I gotta say though the action's great. Yeah, and you know actually for just sitting there noodling unplugged. Yep, yeah, this is actually kind of fun. The neck doesn't feel too thick. I mean, like, you know, you look at an old piece of shit like this. <laughs> well, like, it's it's uh, the Jimmy Reed model, eh? Okay, so who was Jimmy Reed for everybody yeah, asking? I, you'd have to look him up and listen to his, to his tunes. Okay. I know, like, Bob Dylan plucked on one of those in the 60s. Okay. And, uh, there's a few blues guitar players. And, you know. Yeah, this, this is definitely not a shred guitar. This is definitely not a metal guitar in the slightest uh so what we have here so we got two lipstick pickups and a three-way switch and four knobs and uh, that's it and on the back yeah it's just uh feels semi hollow it feels like this there might actually i've i've felt way way more i've felt guitars that are way more hollow than this though this feels like it's a partial solid body so they're experimenting within the 50s eh? you've had the pick guard taken off and uh we'll put some pictures up of that and we can get a look at what's going on here so are they cavities inside Total, then like the okay. whole thing's a big cavity all right but, uh, 
you know, as far as a vintage, vintage instruments, uh, there's a lot of vintage guitar collectors out there, so they know what they're looking at right now. Okay. But uh, it's just that, that it's supposed to be gold top. I don't know if it's changed to that green. I just can't stand the look of it. And, uh, mm. you know, when you see the sunburst ones on the Internet, you, you kind of want to change that green to what you see on the Internet because... That's hideous, that color. But yeah, that is that is a pretty ho horrible color. Now, this is the thing. You haven't been able to find another guitar this color, have you? No. So that remains, that's the big question we're going to put to you guys is Steve wants to maybe sand this thing down and give it a new finish. Just the front, just the front. Just the front. You, the you, 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 you want to keep, you want to keep this wow. awesome, you want to keep this awesome finish on the back too? <laughs> I'm going to have to, man. Okay, so yeah, this is the thing. I mean, like, uh, I'm I'm saying, you know, should we reach out to some of our, our friends and make pickups and maybe get some get some uh, get some new high high output pickups for it or something like that? Obviously, you know, we'd want to probably keep the the lipstick uh, tubes, but uh, maybe we can find something a little more high output. Maybe something some new. Uh... All of that, all of it does work. Okay, it's just the two pickups are very much out of phase. Mm -hmm. And there's a few videos that you can watch of some dudes playing on these. And you'll get that effect, right? Okay. Well, yeah, let's plug it in and see what it can do here. Just be a sec. Now I've got this plugged into the Rev Generator 120 Mark III back there on top of the stack. Um, this is still on loan from the Rev guys, so I figure why not? Because this has got a lot of versatility as far as amps go. But uh, for cleans... That's kind of fun. Um, I noticed though, it's uh, definitely uh, does a few different things on the pickup. We go to middle position here. And it's like, it, it almost completely dies. Yeah, that's uh, a three way. See if, it's, see if it's cutting out. No. no, but if I put it on a higher gain channel, I think we can hear it. Yeah, I'm on the green channel on the new Rev, so it's kind of a marshally kind of mode with both pickups on. It's got kind of a throaty, you know, kind of kind of a beefy sound actually. We got that, you know, kind of 60s grimy vibe. I, yeah. you know, if I could play like Nugent, I'd, you know, I'd play Journey to the Center of the Mind right now, <laughs> but uh <laughs> Yeah, I don't quite have those chops, that's for sure. But I mean, that trouble pickup just kind of cuts out. So I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, we checked the pickup um, is definitely making noise here. But uh, I'm not sure if it's the electronics or the wiring or something, but there's a massive level drop between this pickup and this pickup. And together though, they're fine. So this would be a great guitar for surf rock or something. I, I feel like I should have Ryan from 60 Cycle Hum here right now because uh, that's definitely his genre and it's not mine at all. But I gotta, I gotta say though, uh, I'm really kind of shocked by the action on this guitar. It actually feels really good in this region from like the 12th down to the nut. It's really comfortable and this, which is great because this guitar does not have a truss rod and uh, the neck basically has to be shimmed to be adjusted. Yeah. Am I correct there? Yeah. Okay, so you'd actually have to pull, pull the pick guard off pull the neck off, shim it, and then re reconnect everything. So that's that's a giant pain in the ass. The other thing, uh, this is really unique, and this is the one thing I don't see on very many electrics, and there's probably a good reason for that, is it's actually got a wooden bridge. Like, what is up with that? And Steve was saying, you know, he's got it down here. It's bottomed out right now. Yeah, exactly. And it's as low as it'll go, and it feels a little bit high past the 12th in terms of action, so you might need to do some filing just to take that down a little bit more. <laughs> Not bad, though. 
I gotta say, this is I'm I'm just shocked what by just what condition this guitar is in. This is a ridiculously good shape for what it is. So it's probably not gonna need too much work at all. Look, I'm gonna pose a question to you guys, the audience, and I, I'd love to get some feedback. And the question is, should we have Steve repaint the finish to this thing and make it look nicer, or should we keep it in its original state? I want to hear from you guys. I mean, like, I understand it's rare. But some things from the past are rare for a reason. Like, I remember looking for the Lord Stutch record, Lord Stutch and Heavy Friends. I spent forever looking for that. Finally found it, and then I realized why it was so rare. It's because it sucked. Just because it's old doesn't make it good. I mean, like, take a look at the Ford Edsel, for fuck's sakes. All right, let's be crystal clear here. This is not a cherry red 1957 Gibson Flying V. This is ugly as fuck. The question is, do we keep it remaining ugly as fuck or do we make an improvement on it? My question is, do, do you guys think we should put new tuners on or new pickups? Uh, maybe new potentiometers as well, a new switch. Maybe all that stuff will make a giant difference. Do we see if we can find a replacement bridge for this? Maybe somebody makes something metal. I don't know. I mean, like, this is not my area of expertise. I mean, when it comes to modern guitars, sure, I've got a bit of knowledge, but when it comes to old... Uh, Old, old department store guitars like this, this is definitely not uh, where my knowledge lies. So I am going to pose that question to you guys. If you got a comment or a suggestion, especially for replacement pickups or electronics, that kind of thing, please leave us a suggestion below. We'd love to hear from you. And if we repaint it, we'll definitely do a follow-up episode on it. So make sure you're subscribed so that way you'll get notifications for if and when that video comes out. Anyway, we're going to be digging up some more rock fossils in the future because these videos are an awful lot of fun to do. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.